time has come. The blackout hour yes. is upon us. Um, and we are here, ladies and gentlemen, live in the flesh. We got a great episode today with none other than the homie Mandy B. Shout to Mandy, yo. Legend in the game. Somebody who came on Earn Your Leisure early on to talk about podcasting, and we've remained cool ever since. So shout out to Mandy. Uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's going to be a spicy conversation. If you hell of, a, hell of a businesswoman, too. For sure. She's, yep. getting to it. She's getting to it in a major way. Um, all right. Blackout, a show that uh, myself and Ian put together, executive produced by Troy. And the idea was to have a program that is outside the realm of normal, you know, financial literacy and stuff. We have a lot of conversations about that. This is a little bit more edgy. We uh, talk about some topics that um, are not suitable for Market Mondays. So I will say this. Ladies and gentlemen, the show is uh, comes on at 10 o'clock for a reason. It's not suitable for children of any age. This this particular episode is definitely not suitable for children. Um, and it's also not suitable for sensitive men. And it's also not suited for entitled women. That's what you are. Keep watching the show. <laughs> yes, but it's not suitable for them because... Yes. That there's issues with all, all three of those categories. All right. So we um we'll get this show started. But before we get the show started and talk about the most important stock market group in existence, the Red Panda Stock yes. Club. Talk about that, please. Yeah, if you guys want to get rich from the market, uh want to know what to invest in long term, want to know what stocks to stay away from. You also want to know how to trade futures. Uh, you can go to joinredpanda.com or eninvest.com. It's a special deal there. Come and join us. Uh, this month, I dropped 93 prices for companies where to get in. We talked about um, the fall that happened this past Monday. So a lot of great information. Best group of investors on the planet. If I made you money, let me get a yes in chat. Eninvest.com. We got some special surprises lined up too. Uh, but can you tell them about InvestFest? InvestFest is the vibe, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. If you haven't heard, now you know InvestFest uh, back bigger than ever. This is year four. Four. Um, so wow. we have pre-sale tickets that's running right now. And uh, get your vendor booths. And um, yeah, we back this August, August 23rd through the 25th in Atlanta, Georgia. It's the premier place for investors and entrepreneurs and people seeking to better themselves with information yeah. and relationships. So go to investfest.com right now and get your tickets. Okay. Um, That's all, Atlanta. All right. So let's get this show on the road. Um, mm -hmm. I want to talk about a few different things, if we can, uh, before we bring our guest on. The first that I would like to talk about is uh, this situation that happened in, I believe it was, what's, what, what country was it? Vietnam, was it? Yes. I think it was Vietnam, ladies and gentlemen. So female tycoon, vehement, Vietnamese woman was sentenced to death for fraud. Mm -hmm. I believe it was an embezzlement of $27 billion. Oh, yeah. I don't know how you, I'm not sure how $27 billion, that's a lot of money. Um, Compounded losses, inflation, derivatives, some swindling. So she like the Vietnamese tender swindler and like another person who blew up a fund and won. But. You know, I've never seen, I personally have never seen somebody get the death penalty for a financial crime. That's legendary that's different that's on a whole different stratosphere right yeah um, sentenced to death and they said that you know the reason why it was uh it, it it broke the trust of the of the the people um of the communist government and um i guess they had to set an example yes and that's that's the ultimate price to pay for a financial crime right the death death penalty um What's your thoughts on this? We we you know we have a lot of people that embezzle money in America, but you don't you don't you don't get your head chopped off if you steal money. 
Uh, she should have known the laws a little bit better. Um, I'm not pro death, but I think if it's on the table, I think a lot a lot of people will stop scamming, finessing, and doing illegal things. Um, the truth is, like once you have that big of a loss, you're putting a country at risk. So if she's putting a country at risk, a market. If, imagine if a market collapse would have happened because of that, the ramifications, and then also the people who lost money investing with her. Has anyone considered if they suffered a financial death or not? That, like, even in a Madoff case, some of those families never recovered from 2008. Some of them went homeless. His own family, like his wife, lost a lot of her assets. Kid killed himself. When these kind of crimes happen, I'm not pro death penalty per se, but I think there needs to be a strong enough penalty to make people not want to do these things. For the people that are invested there, probably for a 15-year period, people won't want to invest at all. It's caused like a mass contagion event, and sometimes crimes like this do have a serious punishment. So, I mean, God rest her soul for whatever it does happen, but I think there do need to be stiffer penalties for these kind of crimes. What do you think? Um, you know, it's interesting. I think that you have to um, respect the laws of the land, right? Like yeah. I never forget, I, you know, I was in Asia for 30 days a long time ago, like probably like six years ago, seven years ago. And um, when we were on the plane to go to Singapore, you know, they give you the pamphlets to, to read and it's, it's um, different information about the country. And it's one of these things that, you know, most of the time, most people are not going to read those pamphlets. But for some reason, I actually read it this time around. Yeah. And um, it was interesting what I actually read, because one of the things that I read was drug smuggling of any kind is punishable by death. Mm -hmm. right? So you're like, damn, you can get the death penalty for selling drugs. And then I, when I landed, they're like, yo, there's no drugs here. Mm -hmm. Right. Um. And they're like, well, I'm like, okay, that makes sense, right? Because yep. if you sell drugs or if you get caught trying to traffic drugs, then you're going to die. So it, it could be harsh to kind of kill somebody for um, embezzling money. But I bet you there won't be a, a bunch of people that's trying to embezzle money in the next five to ten years, right? Yeah, so it's one of these things where, you know, um, Every everybody is is different as far as you know how countries work, and you just got to understand that. And um, maybe if 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 there was some level of harsher punishment for white collar crimes in America, we wouldn't have so many white collar crimes. It's one of these things, right? Where they call it the camp. Even in the federal system, they have the camps, which is like the lowest level of um of federal jails. Sometimes you could even leave during the weekend. It's like you play tennis. It's it's it's, it's nothing compared to like a match. Talk your life, yeah. So you got a lot of you know like the violent criminals and, and different things of that nature. They go to like the the maximum facilities, but the guys that you know embezzle money and the white collar crimes, they're usually like in the camp. And if yeah. you read if you read The Wolf of Wall Street, if you read uh, Jordan Belfort, if you read his book, he actually talks about that. Like he was scared to go to jail until he until he got to jail. And they stayed sent him to the camp and he was like, yo, I'm just playing tennis. I'm chilling. Guys are sneaking off in the woods, having sex with their wives. Like, you like, yo, this isn't really even a big deal. So maybe yeah. if there was harsher um, penalties for white collar crimes, we wouldn't have so many white collar crimes. Just a, it's just a suggestion. But like I said, I don't I don't I'm not wishing death on death upon anyone. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's one of these things when you go to these different countries, it's, it's not, we're not playing by the same laws that we playing by the same rules that we playing by in America. 27,000 in Flint, Michigan, to get you done. What you think 27 billion to do? Like you, she could have caused a collapse on the continent. Um, I feel bad for her. Normally when things like this happen, they're not the only one. So if anyone else was involved, I hope that gets discovered as well. But, as we saw in the Bernie Madoff case, people knew for about 15 to 20 years what he was doing, and no one wanted to hear it at the time. So, blessings to our family. God rest her soul whenever it's done. But, yeah, I think there needs to be a harsher penalty for these kind of crimes. How do you spot an opportunist? That's something uh, we've been talking about a lot. I talked to Todd about this earlier today. But I think if people are only around for the upside, the sign number one, 
Um, if people are not checking on you, whether this is personal or business, these both apply. And if you are only hearing from a person when it has benefit to them, I think that's three signs of a person purely being an opportunist. Um, I get it. We all get busy. We all have stuff in our lives that we have to do. But if I'm only hearing from you when you need something or when it's Market Mondays Live or Invest Fest or it's time to go to Mexico, it's like, what are you here for? Like, you're here for the ride along or are you here for the friendship? So, and that's why, like, I admire a lot of my friends who I grew up with who never asked me for anything. Like, I know that the relationship is pure. I don't mind giving, but for the people who have come around and just wanted to take or leverage brand. I'm even, you know, seeing the, the Metro booming big three discussion. A lot of people even want to leverage beef for the benefit of their brand. I'm not falling for it this year. I'm sorry. But I think th those are some core signs that people are just looking for an opportunity uh, to potentially get over. But wh what have you experienced and what do you see? I've experienced everything um, when it comes to opportunists. Sometimes it's harder than others, but I think if you use your, your intuition, yeah. um, I, I think that when men are overly aggressive, that's a red flag. Like, What do you like, mean? Okay, if you want to meet somebody, right, like, you know, you walk up to them, you might introduce yourself and different things of that nature, but when it's like, yo, bro, um, you so, gotta let me know. Yo, you gotta, you know like, yo, I've been rocking with you from day one. My boy knows your man. They went to high school together and they've been trying yeah. to put the play together for years. And yo, what's up, man? Start calling you by a nickname. They never even met you before. Like they, you know what I'm saying? They, they started talking like they knew you for years and you, you yeah. don't even know who they are. Like, you know, just approach me. Like my thing is like, uh, approach me calm. Right. Like yeah. when you start, I get nervous when you start to act like, it, 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 if it feels like it's a it's a frantic race to yeah. try to like close a deal and um that's never a good sign yeah it's just too yeah. much going on like you know what i'm saying so i just feel like that's a red flag of an opportunist slow down when you talk to a person just you know be relaxed take your time don't try to do every single thing at one time like you might not even try to get the person's contact just make an in introduction you know, i'll see you later on i'm sure we can connect the dots stuff like that like you no know, i'll i'll be more um open to dealing with somebody like that as opposed to somebody that's like super yo we got to do this we got to do this this is my story this is da 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 because i've heard that before from a variety of different people and whenever it, it usually always backfires so yeah lesson learned um don't approach me with any nervous energy <laughs> don't be fidgety don't be taking a bunch of pictures off rip or videos yeah, I looked at, oh, I hate that. They come right up to you. Hey, yo, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, bro. Yeah, for sure, man. Put your phone down, bro. That's another thing. Like, put your phone down, right? Don't, when you meet somebody, yeah, don't have your phone. That's like having a, like, a pistol, like, out. Like, don't come with your phone. I don't know what, yeah. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know if you're recording me, right? I don't know if you're recording me. I don't know if you're trying to take a selfie video. You're doing too much. And you're making the situation uncomfortable. Yeah. So, you know, people be trying to get their little world star moment. Mm -mm. Right, you got to be careful. Be cool. And the male groupie epidemic got to stop. It has to stop. Like, fellas, just be cool in every yeah. scenario with women and with men. Um, and if any of you have experienced opportunities being around you, I will say stop letting people breach your boundaries. Tell people what your rules are and hold firm. If they love you, they'll deal with it. All right, man, D B is in the building. Hey, what's up, guys? I appreciate you. That's good merch that you're wearing. You already know I had to throw it on uh, yeah. as a former accountant myself. I forgot you was an accountant. That's yeah, a, that is a I, fact. I sure was. I was supposed to be a CPA, and instead, I'm a freaking podcaster. Yeah. <laughs> Sheesh. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy how like the last of the Mohicans, though. There's not many left. Mandy B, I don't even know where to start. You are uh, a pioneer in the podcast space. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's had, I think, like at least three shows so far. Yep. Um, but Horrible Decisions was the flagship situation for you, you and your partner, Wheezy. And um, yep. you've gone on tour. You've done shows. And for people that are not familiar with what Horrible Decision is and 
it is um it's horrible what a what a w like whore yep. horrible decisions and it's a sex it's a sex show sex right? positive show and and you and you discuss um sex topics in a way that most people are very un uncomfortable with talking about right? no i think so the conversations are uncomfortable but we focused on destigmatizing kinks within the black community and we actually started we were both corporate women so i think a lot of our audience we were able to grow because you know the hoes be working the hoes are in corporate and right, right. You know, i think that when you work in corporate you don't feel like you get to really showcase who you are outside of the workplace yeah. You kind of have to code switch more than you want. And so they got to see two women that were excelling both individually in their corporate careers. And we hopped on there and let them know all the wild stuff we were doing uh, outside of our nine to five. So you say, all right, let's start. Let's start here. You <laughs> said that because um, this, <laughs> this is a finance show and it's all related. Yeah. You said that the holes are in corporate, right? Yeah, I mean, so when I say that, first off, any anybody can be a hoe, and I, we don't even have to stick on that term. But for the things that we do outside of the bedroom, whether we're dating, whether our corporate job isn't paying enough, so when we date a man, we want them to have money to help us with our bills, or maybe we want to take a free trip because men love offering a free trip, you know. So we were sharing. Not me. They got to find themselves out this year. Yeah, I'm saying that. I in. I in. Um, we're not gonna do that. Uh, <laughs> you don't like my fly yourself out better. Come on, what's up? It's cool. Most men with mics lie, so I get it that you don't want to share your real life on the microphone. No, but, uh, I, I share all my. They they talk about this break up multiple times. He said, he said it's cat. They didn't, it's they didn't cap. mean it. Yeah, she said it's cat. It's cat. <laughs> 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 not this year. I, I, I'm saying no business. Not, not breaking year, up boundaries. Sir. sir, we are only in April. Shut up. I'm glad that you can make it through Q1 without a fly. Watch, We're in Q2. What's up? No, that's right. what I'm saying. You made it through. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm doing good so far. As an accountant here, we're going to use the fiscal yep. year, all right? <laughs> oh, year over year. Okay, got you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, basically, we, we shared those conversations about the things that we were doing outside of work. Um, definitely growing in our corporate realm by while navigating what we wanted sexually. Um, and we shared that on the microphone. And, you know, I got a chance to come on. I think I was episode 33 on Earn Your wow. Leader. But I was able to pretty much make my salary in five months and chose to give up accounting to try this full time. And I'm yeah. about five years doing this full time. And mm -hmm. it's the best decision I think I could have made. Yeah, I'm proud of you for that. Um, media is dying. Podcasts are in shambles. What have you been able to do to have an impact in media, do well financially, and carve out your own lane? Because I see a lot of people are copying. What, mm -hmm. what did you do that was different than most people that allowed you to have the freedom that you have now? Um, I'll be honest with you. I think that, and, and this is where I lean into it more than anything, um, I think a lot of people in podcasting and entrepreneurship don't have degrees. And I think that I lean in the fact that the knowledge that I was able to obtain in college it is like, it helped me so much. Like where I'm at financially, I have my M1 account. I have over six figures in my 401k. I have a savings right now to purchase property. And I literally pay estimate taxes to where every year I'm going in, I'm having about $30,000 to pay towards my taxes to where by tax time, I may have to pay another 10 or 12, but I'm not financially hurting yeah. having, having to give up forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 at the drop of a dime. So I think knowing what estimate taxes are, having a really close relationship with my accountant and doing those quarterly estimates yeah. uh, definitely, I think, put me ahead of the curve. I am going to be very honest in sharing that um, I am very scared with this podcast bubble and the media burst that is happening right now. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I don't know what to say to people. I know there's a, a lot less MG opportunities happening for people and a lot more rev splits, but then you're waiting 60 to 90 days on, on your payout from these brands yeah. and these companies. So, yeah. so let me ask you this, cause this is blackout. So it's a little bit more of an edgy show. 
but it's also something that says, this is actually a financial question I'm actual. You was at my birthday, I believe, like four, three years, a while ago. We had, I had like a yes. random dinner. And you, you, you mentioned something that I had never heard before as far as a, um, a fetish that, that men have um, <laughs> to, to give women money. Oh, I mean, femdom. Wait, it's a fetish for men to give women it's, money? Like they it's, take it's financial, they, financial domination. Financial yeah. domination. Financial yeah. domination. Talk there's, about this. Talk about this, please. So there's a humiliation kink. So it's a part of the humiliation kink, uh, actually. And it's where men, I mean, it could be virtually. It could be you demanding a man to take you to an ATM and either drain his account or to give you money. Um, I had that they're called uh, financial pigs as well is actually what they're referred to by the doms. But it'll be something as, as much as you literally say, I won't talk to you until you send me money. Send me money now before I speak to you. Sprinkle, and there's sprinkle. it's a sprinkle sprinkle effect. Yeah. Um, but this is this is uh, one of the kinks that I learned from Mistress Marley. And she is a master in financial domination. And where I haven't fully been able to do the thing. Um, I definitely believe that you don't get what you want unless you ask for it. So um, I think that that could be another thing. I think a lot of men have a problem offering money. So a lot of times with women, if they get into any sort of relationships, the number one advice I say is you don't get for what you don't ask for. Closed mouths don't get fed. I helped a lot of people make money from investing. I'm trying to help people or women on this show catch two simps. Um, so how can they catch a simp for Q2 through four so they can run that bag up? Um, First off, not you had me in here telling all the tea. Um, I mean, you got to come so, with it. So I think first they have to slide into at the master investor. Um, that would be my first. They won't get a motherfucking advice. dollar out of me. <laughs> that would be my first advice. Shit, go ahead and try. <laughs> No, no, no. I'm going to send you a link to join Red Panda. I'm going to reverse the Tinder swindler shit. Go ahead. That is hilarious. You, um, that ahead. would actually be my first tip. My yep. second tip, um, <laughs> I think, would honestly to be in the rooms of these men. So the, the nice restaurants, the hotel lobbies, uh, attending the conferences or, you know, knowing where the restaurants are around there and dressing the part. I think you have to know how to talk to these men. At the end of the day, I think that that's what I've realized outside of looks. These men love someone that they can just talk to. Conversation is so it's, key. Yo. Conversation is key. And I think that so many people like that. Yeah. I think that if you can give someone, you know, the attention and the capacity of not only listening, but knowing how to respond and hold conversation, I yeah. think that's golden. And I think that with social media, that's what's missed right now. Everyone thinks they just got to show up and look like Instagram filters. Nah, baby, you need nah. a personality. Yeah, personality is key. So there's a lot of talk online these days about... um sex workers uh -huh. um and it's become like a running joke with 50 cent he actually made an acronym um <laughs> little sex worker um so but there are it's a, it's actually a billion dollar industry right and they it say is. like even um prostitution is the oldest profession in the, in the in the world that's what that's like the goal that's what they say traditionally right so um sex worker what exactly is a sex worker because i think the term kind of is usually lose you yeah i mean it's it's an umbrella i mean wheezy and i have talked about with our podcast we would be considered sex workers even though we're not having really? transactional sex for money yes we are within the sex work umbrella let's be very clear in terms of our podcast it has been very hard to monetize uh from the advertising sense which is why we go on tour which is why we have patreon which is yeah. why we focus more on our community building. Um, I mean, you don't have to be having sex to be a sex worker. I mean, you could have a foot page and be considered a sex worker. You could literally, you know, anything that arouses someone else that you're financially profiting from, if it can be labeled under that umbrella, um, could be considered sex work. I, it's weird. I think people shame it, but it's crazy. The, the women that I know now with OnlyFans, making money that I don't think any of us thought 
could be possible. I have a friend now. She posts a lot of what she puts on Instagram. Maybe she has some pictures in the shower and some extra nudes. She's she's bringing in fifty thousand dollars a month, and she's not having sex. On OnlyFans, on OnlyFans, she is bringing in fifty thousand dollars a month, and it was it was probably double that during the pandemic. But they want to tell me they don't have enough money to invest in Apple. Shout out to all y'all who subscribed to her, to our OnlyFans page. Um, last week, Rashad talked to us uh, how to go from a DM to setting up the date. But as a woman, how should men approach women in person when they get in these spaces? Because a lot of people are awkward these days because of social They're media. So awkward. Yeah, you know, like what are what are some really tips to approach? You, it's it's really simple. If we are at a bar or if we are somewhere where people are drinking, baby, don't come up to me and not ask me if I would like a drink. But also you purchasing me a drink does not give you the right to be with me all night. So yeah. it's, it's that simple. If I'm drinking, Oh, they buy the drink and babysit. Oh <laughs> my God. No, they buy the drink and now they think that they are yours. Sir, yeah. you spent $12 in New yeah. York, 25. That does yeah. not grant you, you know, to be around me all night. But yeah. I think that that, that is lost on us. I'm, I'm 33. I remember being in the club in the early 2000s, late 2000s. Different times. And, yeah. and men were buying drinks. They're not doing that anymore. So I think the sending a drink over um, is a, is an easy entry. Um, and not being weird. Literally just, again, being able to hold conversation. I think yeah. that's what else is, is missed right now. So, okay. Let me ask you this. You, um, I think you had a negative reaction to Ian's post when he said to invest in yourself. Invest in yourself, yo. Uh, um, and and what, wait, Maddie, my homie, my negative, though. What was my negative response? I ain't gonna hold you. Ian just, Ian just be talking sometimes. No, and I, I don't be liking what he be saying. A lot. If I, if I'm in love, I'm gonna take care of my baby. But on a regular, but, so just so, a regular degla, I'm not finna. So if, if so, the the term invest in yourself, right? Where it's like, okay, um, a young lady should invest in her flight. And her transportation on a vacation because it's going to yield dividends in the future, right? Like if you're able, and I said I would cash up when she got back. But really quick, if we fly somewhere and we go to a villa and we in something that's six, seven thousand square feet, if you don't have the money to get your ass on a three hundred dollar frontier flight, I shouldn't fuck with you no way. <laughs> so what was your <laughs> what? What's your <laughs> we don't talk. Here, here, here's here's the thing, men actually could give a flying rat's ass about how much money a woman has or Big what fact. she's willing to spend. And so the fact of the matter is, a woman can fly herself, could even buy that six thousand square foot villa. It doesn't mean that she has any more like movement in front of a bitch that literally spends nothing. Men do not care about a woman who is financially yeah. capable of doing those things. A lot of times, actually, men want to feel needed. Men want to feel like they're giving you an experience. Men want to feel validated in their actions. And mind you, y'all work so hard so that y'all can probably get the women that wouldn't pay y'all no motherfucking mind if you didn't have money. Oh, so, what, you, what you mean by that? I'm just no, saying. I, I, oh, I, 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 I'm not probably. saying y'all. I'm speaking in general. Oh, gotcha. Okay, I was going to I'm like, no, for the record, in general here. That's to my old baby's funny. Well, 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 no, there's a there's a lot of money, and there's a, I, I think Ian, I may have said this under a clip. Money can't unlame you, but that's when a man makes fact. money, they where they believe they are on the totem pole, and it is facts. It becomes yeah. higher. They are able to get women that if they did not have a bag. Now they can have access to. Yeah. And so if a woman is spending money, going half on a date, flying herself out to you, I'm friends with a lot of athletes. I know a lot of women who have flew themselves thinking that it would make them seem more wifey material to them. Yeah. Means nothing. Thank you for yeah. saving them four hundred dollars. Appreciate you. you. Appreciate, appreciate you. Thank you. You're going to get this dick the same way a bitch that I fly out gets. It. <laughs> it's the same I'm going to you back home and still ignore your text messages or talk to you via Snapchat. <laughs> they send you home early, ain't it? <laughs> you know, I still make my nose. Bye. Bye. My mouth. Thank, thank you. you. Fly yourself back. And thank so you. Me, and so to me, if appreciate you're a woman, if you're a woman making $75,000 a year, flying yourself out to a, a man with a $100 million check, girl, what are you doing? Yeah. Like him <laughs> spending that money 
is is the equivalent of you buying a coffee in the morning before you go into work. Girl, let that man buy you a coffee. I, but the other side of that too was just from my case. If a woman don't want to do that, then she really don't fuck with you. Like, and that was disagree. the funny part about about, about disagree, the comments. I just I disagree. I'm telling you my real life experience. I ain't telling you like as a man. I'm one of the few motherfuckers who even say that shit. It's a bunch so of men. I, who, so, so I'm telling ahead. you my experience as a woman. Here we go. So as a woman, you want me to chase you? You want me to fly? I, 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 I don't need to be chased. But that, but that's the equivalent of if you want to see. That, that, that's not the equivalent. It's not the equivalent. I, I believe it. You know, <laughs> you know, you know it's not. L -l Listen, me and you friends with that shoddy party. Did I make you pay for drinks or anything? I, I came and got you out the line. Am I brand new or no? No, nah, you was you was real nice, but we're always not, right. Yeah, yeah, but but we're not pursuing each other. Yeah. So we're we're homies. If we go out to eat, oh nigga, I might pick up the tab. Cause you ain't never getting no cooch. But yeah. if it's a man no. that I think you <laughs> shoddy, shut up. <laughs> but like shoddy if Alex, it's a guy, if it's a guy it's a different we're, dynamic. Yeah, we're genuinely pursuing yeah. each other, or I believe he's only around me because he wants a different type of relationship. Yeah. I'm saying he like chase me. Like, can we get back to where a man actually has to put? But but shouldn't there be mutual interest? Like, I think even if a man, like, I'm gonna be real, if men are chasing women, most men chase women who don't fucking want them. That's how them niggas end up being stalkers and creepers and shit like that. It gotta be mutual. What is we talking about? They bad. <laughs> they bad. That them the ones that are DM you 27 times in a row. Yo, I love this episode. The new episode with your Weezy was so fire, and I got a kink. I be jacking off when I listen to horrible, and I want to make love to you when I see you. Them be the weirdos. That's a fact. That is Come a on, fact. man. That's a fact. And then the podcast fan groupies. Oh, they. <laughs> Ooh, stop. They be scaring me. Ooh, go nah, home. Nah, nah. I'm not interested in them either. I just, yeah. I, I just think that. When it when it comes to dating, yeah. we have to consider finances. And again, if you make a certain amount of money, well yeah. above a woman that you're entertaining, to sit here and and expect her or believe that she's more into you because she's putting out that 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 this is why the men are in their like bad bitch era, and I'm I'm fed up. Like they want a woman to somewhat show up for them, pursue them, chase them, show that their interest. Yeah. interested and i think that that's what's taken away from me let's be very clear a man puts out when he's interested and we'll well, let me, let's, let's 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 all right let's 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 talk about this because i've Come been doing, i've been doing this before i had money um <laughs> let's talk <laughs> go ahead shoddy go ahead 22 years in the game i'm i'm, 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 I'm a i'm a veteran a veteran ain't it decorated highly decorated veteran <laughs> so here's my philosophy on life I highly encourage women to approach or let a man know that they're interested. I highly encourage. And this is why. This is why. The better vibe. We tell women to go for what you want in life. We tell women to pursue the career that you want in life. We tell women to pursue the, the degree that you want in life. We tell women all of these things to be aspirational and to go after what you want in life. This is what we've been taught in America for women. You you go after everything that you want except for a man, except for what could potentially be the most important part of your family structure. Why, how does that make sense? You're sending missed messages to women. So I, I now not to say that a man can't go after a woman either, mm -hmm. but it's like, if you, if you like me, how am I going to know? Right. So, so can I ask you a question then? Are both of you saying that you only can pick up that a woman likes you? If she offers to split the bill, no, no, no. I, I don't believe in splitting the bill. Okay, okay. So no, no, no. I, I don't believe in splitting the bill. So to me, there's so many other ways that women naturally show up when they're interested in man outside of finances that both of y'all are very aware of. Whether we cook for you, whether we actually care one. about your day, whether we invest ourselves into your businesses or. Yeah. Or involve ourselves in your family matters. There's so many ways as women. We gotta do that little hair scratch thing. Oh that baby, the, oh oh, the nah, hair scratch. We really like the kisses on on the chest. We really like you. Nah, but but I, what I'm saying is that no, no, for sure. But that's a more involved relationship. I'm just saying, just off of just off of the to get to know you, right? Like, there's nothing wrong with a woman 
expressing interest. Hey, you know, are you single? Or you send somebody that you know my, my friends interested in you type vibe. Like that's okay. That, that, that definitely happens. I also think that women and and, and y'all. When I say y'all, it's men. Y'all know when a woman is interested. Is she responding yeah. to your text messages or is she leaving you on read for two days? Like, it's the little things first in the beginning of a relationship that lets you yep. know if a woman is genuinely interested in you. Again, the problem is men may feel the, 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 the need to get to grab more of the attention by leading with their wallets. Let's be, come on. That happens a lot too. The, yep. way that, the way that a man on a first date will let you know the labels they're wearing, will order food just to make it see... I've had, I've been on a date and a man has pulled out a wallet of cash. Yeah, Baby, the check right. is one thirty two. Yeah. What are you doing with all this yeah. goddamn money in your hands? Yeah. You better put that shit away. But yeah, you, well, maybe he was a financial pig. He wanted you to dominate him. Facts. He offered. It's awkward. Like, it, you know what's funny? That it's actually the opposite. Now you you want a man to leave you alone? Ask him for some money. Ask him. You, that's <laughs> the fact. That's the block. Yo, the last person. The the last, for real. The last. Let me tell you a story. So the last girl. That open uh, girls don't really be asking me for money. I have never. I usually that doesn't really happen to me too often. But the last person that asked me for money, the response was me blocking their number. Can I ask you how, how much she asked ask, for? Yeah, how did they ask and what did they ask for? She asked to. She asked me. Um, she was moving apartments, whatever, and she needed like rent or like first month rent, security oh, yeah. deposits, whatever. Okay. And um. She asked me in person, and I kind of like. How much was it? How much was it? It was probably like 2000, 2100, something like that. She asked me in person, and I kind of ignored. I, I I ignored the request. This is like somebody you knew casually. This is like your baby. No, no, no. This is just a casual of, um, vibe. This was. Slobs can't ask for no money. And what? this was. It, you, this etiquette, how to go about this. But, um, and then the second time, the next day, she was like, hey, just wanted to remind you, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, if you could send that money, I greatly appreciate it. <laughs> and I was so disturbed by the, the way that she went about it that <laughs> I never actually took the time to respond. I just blocked, I blocked her number. Now, here's my question then to both of you. This yes. woman was moving apartments. This was a valid expense. She felt comfortable yeah. in asking you. So there was some sort of rapport some sort of relationship whether you felt that way or not well then it's not like she was asking for a bag or something minute either what would be an appropriate way for a woman to ask money from a man that she knows has it so let me, without let me getting blocked? right for sure let me say one thing she had actually asked a few different times for a few different other things so it wasn't it wasn't the first time but okay. here's, how, here's how i would go about it if if i was in the shoes because there's a difference between somebody that you're in a relationship with yeah. and somebody that you just on the vibe with. If you're on the vibe, I don't owe you anything, right? So I'm not obligated to give you money. No. What's wrong with that? No <laughs> one owed anything. I, wh why I, do I, I, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna hold you. If you could ask me for getting triggered. A, if you could ask me for coochie on a Tuesday, I'm not asking them. I'm not asking. They're giving I'm it. I'm just saying, <laughs> if, if, if this is an exchange, like, and maybe this is where women go wrong, I, I don't feel like I would be comfortable dealing with a man that wouldn't be able to help me out if I asked for it, especially so if I knew they had it. Here's the thing, um, when you, but that's a good boundary to have if you want to have it. But it's, sex for sex for money is prostitution. So just because you just because you make a decision to have intercourse with a person that doesn't mean that said other person has an obligation to pay you there's no obligation but again there's a relationship she also wasn't asking transactionally it's not like she asked you to leave it on the nightstand after you guys just had sex she was asking because there was a relationship built so that that's where i guess my issue comes right now with the narrative of prostitution and dealing with somebody who has it who should be able to look out if you need something. Well, here's like, the so it's, 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 difference in those relationships. Here's, here's a better way how to go about it, right? Like, hey, um, you know, I'm in the I'm in the process of moving. Da, 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 do you think you can help out? Are you, is that not how she asked it? No. She said, 
I need twenty one hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. A media file. No. No. And the crazy part when people get to asking for this money, and the media, I know you have it happen to you too. They don't never have no small requests. There's no, no two hundred dollars. In my twenties, I was a cheap bitch for a little bit. Like, but then I, I, I did like as I went up, I was like, Oh, I'm never asking a man for less than five hundred dollars. I think as a woman, if you ask for less than five hundred dollars, you are really down bad. But but, 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 but May, let me let, let me give you let me give you some game. Let me give let me give all the women some game out here. If you have to ask a man for money, you're already in trouble. Big facts. Because if a dude really rocking with you, he gonna give and it. And he up. really and he really is into you like that. He, you don't have to ask him for money. He's going. He, he's going to be doing things for you because he notices that you're in need. If you need it. Or he wants to have a level of security for you. If you're in a situation where he's never done anything for you, and you you're you're forced to ask him for money, mm -hmm. it's not the person that you should even be asking for money because that person mm -hmm. is not. That, he's not that into you. And it's the difference between if your baby asks you for some money, like baby, you can get it. The the play thing, it's a bad investment. I, I ain't gonna hold Apple one seventy two. You the, know what I mean? The play thing better be able to ask. I think that that. I mean, nah. Have, shit. No, you can't call into the conference call if you the play thing. Don't you? You lucky to get to Zoom? What? <laughs> for I just really start going out on dates. So how do you feel about what I just explained as far as if you have to ask somebody for money, you're already down bad in the situation? I mean, uh, again, I, I know and I've dealt with so many men that were more of the closed mouths don't get, you know, fed method. That, um, a, yeah. I, I dealt with I dealt with men that especially because I wasn't their primary, that it was like. Hey, let me know what you need, and they're there to help me when I need. But other than that, it's it's not on, like when it was you never say, transactional. When you say you wasn't their primary, what does that mean? Like they they were married. So like to me, I've I've never no, dealt with. No, we're not gonna. <laughs> and, and you was on my ass about uh, asking the motherfucker for a flight. <laughs> Shut oh, up. No. Shut up. Right, let's not crazy. Let's not let's not just graze over this. Yeah, thing. let's no, no. <laughs> multiple. You said they were married, so that's multiple people, right? So, so yeah. you have you have multiple relationships with married men, right? I don't like how you are starting this. <laughs> <laughs> just, this was this was in my past. Yes, got you. What what what's the psychology? I'm always curious. What's the psychology of knowing? That you're you're a side chick. She caught her two sims. That's what it was. But do you pursue it? Oh, no, it tell you, do you know that they're married, or do you or do they tell you later? How's that work out? Um, I mean, they were, they all were different uh, dynamics. Oh, you're good. <laughs> you're so good. That podcast and voice, Shadi, you hear the, the dynamic was different from each other. You ain't really gonna ruin no relationships, okay? No, 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 no. This was this was this was in my twenties. Okay. So, I mean, one was African, so of course I knew he had a wife. Uh, they all do. <laughs> Shout out to my Nigerians. Shout out to, my, to the pros in Ghana, man. Uh, yeah, all of them have wives. If you meet an African in America, their wife is just back home. Uh, yes. <laughs> Damn. Okay. Um, Damn. And then an another one I met, actually, while he was engaged, um, and because I knew he was getting married, like we, I, I didn't have sex with him for probably the first year and we grew a friendship and then his money grew and then he had me on payroll for about two years. Um, okay. I got to ask for the ladies, how you set up the payroll play? You was on actual payroll. Yes. Yeah, so how you get this off? Was, Hold he on. Was, he was, he was very, very high in the industry in an industry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He was very, very high, and he employed and set up all the independent contractors. So he had me as a fake employee on payroll. So even though I wasn't really anywhere active, I got my check every two weeks. And, that, uh, and this, this was that, while I was in college. And your job was to just be his side chick. I mean, yeah, but and I maybe saw him like once a quarter. Once a quarter. Yeah. Uh, or like when he came into town, but we didn't see each other often. I mean, I still know him to this day. Really good friend of mine. Um, 
we don't have that relationship anymore, but like we really had a friendship. Did you um, did you feel comfortable in in the role of a side chick? I mean, when I was in my twenties, not wanting kids, not wanting marriage, literally yeah. trying to survive, and literally putting myself through school, um, it worked for me. It worked for me. Um, I you know I wasn't in the in the space to be fully questioned on what I did, and he didn't fully provide for me. So while I still had to work and juggle other friends. Uh, <laughs> other investments right <laughs> investment strategy yeah i mean okay. i mean to, to me again in, in your 20s that makes sense um i know some girls in their 30s still doing it it's whatever makes sense for you i mean those types of relationship dynamics it's weird because um i felt more comfortable in at least knowing what my role is in comparison to maybe a wife that maybe didn't know the person they were truly married to yeah. um so at the time it, it worked for me. Um, would I willingly engage into that type of relationship present day? Uh, not really, unless they're like really rich, like like Floyd, I wouldn't mind being a part of a harem or something, but I'm not interested in like uh, <laughs> just being a side chick to you, a nigga for a couple thousand, no. You wouldn't mind being one of multiple five. Yeah, Mool Bodie. Sorry, that was my cat. <laughs> cat trying to stop you from going crazy yo. <laughs> no i've been gone for five days and he wants all the attention um i'm non-monogamous i feel like women unknowingly sign up to be one of many even in their monogamous relationships um so to okay. me i would rather kind of know the the person that i'm getting in with and i just love again the the ability to be open and communicative with my partner yeah. and i think that when a man is monogamous and does seek other women it's because he's not fully able to be his full self with that person i think a lot of men go into marriage just want to check off boxes of what they want as a wife and then bitches be boring so it be you know <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, boring ones are the worst I mean, though <laughs> but but it makes sense because they're good mothers they're good heads of the household in terms of what they can do you know in terms of being a wife but for all the things that kind of excite people in life maybe sometimes they're lacking there or to be honest with you it's really easy to just hold a relationship with someone when you don't have the financial stress of actually being business partners that's what a marriage is they're still business partners i mean to be fair um shout out to you shoddy for even being able to maintain the friendship that you have with with Troy right now. Like, I think that the the dynamics of business and money in relationships make shit tough. hard. And that's why I went from three pods to two. Baby. Yeah, I, I it's mean hard keep, it's hard to keep like like how you expect someone to show up in business and how they show up as a friend and not intermingle the two with with yeah. what they're able to do. So that's let's talk bad. about it then. We'll have to stay there long, but you went through a recent business breakup. Like, what lessons did you learn? Divorce. It's a divorce. The lesson learned is get your fucking lawyers, baby. Figure, like, I, I, I hate to say this, be prepared for the worst in the beginning. That's it. I think that, I think we learned what we learned through Rory and Maul with their separation from Joe, with, yeah. I mean, everyone... Math Hoffa, cut Math Hoffa, off, like, Math Hoffa, like Trump, he'll find somebody quick. The math. math, Math go crazy. I don't, I don't know what, uh, what partnership agreements they got over there yeah. now. They're just being, you know, hired as talent. That's another thing. Math has all rights to do what he wants if that's the arrangement. Yeah. It doesn't seem like any of them niggas that got let go thought that they were let goable. Um, I think to to me it's. It's it's really it's really learning the ins and outs of business. It's getting your shit lined up, cause baby, right now, shit getting a little sticky, and baby, just know the person with the most money gonna win. So you better get them get your chicken. Okay, what well, we're gonna bring? Did it um after that breakup? Don't be laughing over there. <laughs> I know, but but did it make you and Weezy closer? Did it make you appreciate you what y'all have going? sharing the workload no no and no it, it made me tell her hey uh we need to have a meeting with our lawyer to get what a dissolution looks like now while we're in just in case yeah yeah, yeah. It, it's you gotta like, do it we, a good standard we 
we need to make some amend amendment to our partnership agreement while we're while we're yeah. good so that this doesn't blow up in array and that you know whenever we both agree to you know depart from this venture it's amicably um and that there's no question of splitting of assets or who gets what or who's responsible where IP for what. Goes, yeah. where ip goes that this is discussed prior to us getting there yeah so let me ask you this i got one last sex question um we know you do age old this is the age old <laughs> That many men have um men, you know, men. Can you turn a hoe into a housewife? Right? Is that something that's capable? I'm gonna give you my answer, but I would I would like to hear your answer. I would hear your are, are you giving your answer first? Would you like me to? Um, yeah, I would love to hear what toxicity about to come out your mouth. <laughs> it's actually not toxic. Um okay. I, I think that you can. All right. right? And I think that the movie um, Pretty Woman was a perfect example of that. When um... <laughs> who wouldn't have stayed with Richard Gere in real life, yo? But go ahead, I'm listening. I'm listening. Yeah, listening. Essentially, he that's what he did. He actually he he did it in real life, right? Well, in the movies, um, Richard Gere yeah. took Julia Roberts, who was a, a prostitute, and he he cleaned her up and uh, made her. His wife. So my thing is this: when a woman is promiscuous, it's usually because something has happened. She might have got molested when she was a child. She might not have a father. She might have um, self-esteem issues, and then, and then there's a variety, you up, yo. there's a variety of different things that come and just pile on to that. And once men realize that this girl is extremely promiscuous, they treat her as a tremendously promiscuous person and there's no ever but nobody has ever taken the time to actually try to unwind that yeah, situation. Right. so it's like if somebody actually is talented enough to unwind that situation it's going it's going to be difficult that's going to be a situation that's going to be very difficult right but that person is probably going to be the most loyal the, the ex ho will probably be probably the most loyal person because they'll be so grateful that a person actually treated them like you know. talk to me sis what's up because i hey i've been looking oh down with my glasses this boy good to man did you hear the tonality this boy good you know what's crazy if you take the time no you know what's crazy and this is what i say all the time um i i've been on tour with tonight's conversations and and bless Let's everyone go to the guys you, you th shout out to ace metaphor trip yeah. everybody um he just showed was the ability to complete sentences and sound like he was saying so much profound shit without saying anything profound at all. How was I the world saying if you take the time to nurture? No, no, and this is the problem. A, I think <laughs> A, I think how we define a hoe is subjective, right? I mean, if we talk about turning a hoe into a housewife, you leaned immediately into promiscuity and you leaned into prostitution, coupled with the fact that they chose to do those two things only because of trauma, daddy issues, insecurity, ah, 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 completely removing the fact that maybe this woman just really enjoys sex, that maybe this woman has navigated the industry because let's 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 use examples real quick. Who have we seen referenced as a hoe who has multiple times been white? We have Kim Kardashian. We have Drea Michelle. We have Amber Rose. We have we have Joy Chavez. We have all these. Hold on. We oh I can keep allegedly allegedly. <laughs> allegedly allegedly we we have Lori Harvey. Let's be very clear. In, allegedly. Uh, 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 these are all these Jesus are all, Christ. These are, not one moment. These are all just examples yep. of women who have unfortunately bear this label based on society based mm -hmm. on their past experiences we know amber rose was a, a dancer in philly allegedly but her story as well same yeah. as drea there's these women have shared their stories but yet we have seen them be wiped we have seen them with rings we have seen them with children we have seen them in long-standing relationships i think it is very clear that these women are wifeable the problem is men sit here and get with the women that they know and expect them to be something completely different. 
without accepting the women that they just choose to be with. I think that's the problem. The same way we see a lot of men want to take uh, date a stripper, and then as soon as they they fall in love, they want to take her out the strip club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. That's what it is. Like, allow this woman who you met to still have fun and go out and club. Allow this woman to still maybe have threesomes with you or engage in frivolous sex acts that you know she enjoys. The problem is men get with these women and then want to cage them up, want to sit here and turn them into them people holy. that they're not. Yeah. Instead of just dating the woman that they liked, you like hoes. Men don't want to admit that they like hoes. That's the problem. Wife these hoes with pride, men. Wife them with pride. Bad financial advice, yo. Now, yeah. ladies, if y'all trying to catch a simp, go for it. But fellas, clip that up. Shout out to Twenty One Savage. That man was at the slut walk. Walking around waving a flag, them the type of fellas we need out here. Great, great PR move and left her and what? Don't do that! Don't do that! Don't do that! Allegedly. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Shadi, I can't stand you. B. So I, right. I, have, I have one. Go here, Shadi. No, no, the guy, guy. No, I got one more media question. Um, I know you and Joe went through your turmoil. You seen Roy and Maul. You going through your stuff now. Do you think this is an issue in our community or just in podcasting and broadcasting in, in general? Like I talk about it all the time on Market Mondays, like Disney's going through hell, media is being reshaped, but I think there's an incredible opportunity over the next decade. Like what's the bigger issue in podcasting and media that people are not seeing right now as in terms of the industry? Um, I mean, I, I think that we're dealing with the same exact thing that's happening with um, the streaming and film and music industry. Music, yeah. Um, a, I think people spent a lot, like the pandemic really um, gave people a false sense on what they could spend, what they had. Um, yeah. We see that there's real estate buildings literally sitting, and these companies are trying to offload their rent expenses, yeah. salaries because they overpay people. We saw an influx of people getting paid two salaries because they were able to be. Uh, virtual yep. for these companies. Um, a lot of a lot of companies thought they could get into the podcast space. Let's be very clear. Coming from film industry and music, and a motherfucker was they was giving million dollar deals out, not knowing how to get their money back. So there yeah. was no real idea of an ROI on a yeah. lot of the deals that were being made. We see Spotify ended up not re-signing Call Her Daddy. We see that they dropped uh, millions of dollars into Michelle Obama, Meghan Markle, Kim Kardashian. Will Smith, yeah. Um, a lot of these celebrities that not only never produced a show, but let's be extremely clear. A lot of us don't want to hear these celebrities talk because they barely have anything to fucking say. They're media trained. They're not that great on the microphone. And unfortunately, yeah. what it did is it took a lot of money from those of us that can actually come into this media space with something with something to say with a brand to grow um i i don't know i think they very um what 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 would i say you saying that the next decade could be interesting um yeah. in media i think that mm, I, I don't know if we go back 10 years from today and 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 view the landscape of what technology has to offer the social media there's been so much of a change I don't yep. think that we could even begin to think right. of where the, the media landscape will be in 10 years. Yep. I'm literally thinking of, okay, what does the next year look like for me? Two years. I'm pitching television shows right now. I'm trying to create an animated series. I'm trying to get into the other, you know, holes of, of media only because podcasting right now is, 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 you know, not so great. Yeah. So how do you make money outside of, podcast ads like i know you got the studio she got the yeah. sense yes yeah, so, well so we we have we have we do have a an, an mg deal with black effect which i do want to say um they are one of the last ones standing and yep. still giving out checks so while a lot of people left black effect after year one and went to warner went to series went to audio a lot of these companies completely eliminated their podcast division. The entire division. Yep. There, there are a lot of podcasters out here right now having to pay out of pocket with no deals, trying to yeah. figure out how to get their own ads. So I do want to shout out real quick to iHeart and Charlemagne because at the end yeah, of the day, they, they've been they've been kicking 
and they're still re I, that relationship has been wonderful. And MG um, MG is minimum guarantee. Yes. So, and that's where a lot of people they don't know what you know. They they try to figure out me and Bridget's deal. So when they're like, oh, no, no. So me and Bridget got a one point oh two million dollar two year minimum guarantee. That was our deal. Um, and so we got paid out monthly throughout our deal. And basically it was a, a an ad partnership deal exclusively that allowed only Gumball to sell into our show. That is the deal that we also have with Black Effect. So we got an MG. Uh, I ain't gonna tell y'all that one cause we still in it. Um, but we, we were in year four with them, if that says anything. Gotcha. Not complaining at all about the money uh, we are getting with Black Effect. But basically, we are exclusive to them and them being allowed to exclusively sell ads into our show. Um, our deal with Black Effect allows us to monetize our YouTube, allows us to fully keep our Patreon, allows us to 100% keep our merch, allows us to 100% keep our, our touring. And any bookings and hostings that we have, they do not get to eat out of. They are only eating out of our advertising uh, sales revenue. Right. And so as as a podcast, you just have to diversify your portfolio, which is it's fine. You know, it's, it's kind of one on one. You don't sit here and just hope that you make money one way, the same way so many brands make sure they not they, they don't only have one product. They have multiple. Yeah. That's the same thing you have to do with a podcast. And I think um, Patreon has been Patreon has been great great to us. Although Patreon is pissing me off right now. So, like hypothetically, for the ladies who are trying to find like four four guys to give them five grand a piece, and they need the twenty one hundred. How they find a guy that's gonna give them the twenty one hundred? Oh, baby, they don't even exist anymore. Even on seeking arrangements, them niggas all fraud. Um, it, the mean, market drop it's a crash in the sugar you know, baby market you know, too you know it's crazy it's not that it, it's not that it's a crash um i can't speak for the women dating white men <laughs> i've never been in that pool so maybe it's different over there um and then unfortunately as we see with all the rat beef baby they like to rotate the same four girls so if you're not one of them um you just got to kind of get in where you fit in cuz they like dealing with the same women so i mean so I don't me, know what to tell you, ladies. Let me tell you. Let me ask you this: Your, your, your live show has been um, said to be one of the best yes, in, in yeah. podcasts, and, and it is for sure. And it. <laughs> what's the key? What's the key to creating um, memorable live experiences? Because a lot of people have followings on social media or on YouTube, but it doesn't convert. To yeah, I know it was crazy when academics couldn't sell out in Jersey. I wasn't gonna say I was it. Like, yeah. I was like, "What's going on?" Um, <laughs> y'all know I'm petty. <laughs> um, <Start> to act, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, you know what? I think I think here's the thing: we we understand conferences and panel discussions, right? Podcasting at the end of the day is people holding conversations. Now. How interesting is that to be in a room and sit for an hour and a half of a conversation between yeah. people? You would lose it. So I think um, one of the key things for us was making our show really interactive. We bring live kinksters to the stage. We bring up the audience and, and play games. Um, I think we still share a lot of our personality, but a lot of what our show kind of looks like is more of a burlesque show, a variety show. Mm. Um, and I think a lot of people still think that they can just put on a podcast, sit on a stage, and just talk with their friends. Baby, that is very hard to keep an audience's attention for that amount of time. And yeah. then again, ROI, you're paying for these venues if you're not signed to UTA or WME and doing Live Nation venues where you're getting a flat rate fee. So you're paying for a venue, you're paying for security, you're coming out of pocket anywhere seven to ten thousand dollars to put on a live show now Easy. you have to actually now you have to actually charge your fans 40 to 50 dollars a ticket to at least break even and and profit right so you're you're charging 50 dollars a ticket they have to buy drinks it's a hundred dollar night you have to be able to entertain Gotta, people yeah. because they're looking to get out of their homes and have fun they're not looking to just hear y'all talk like y'all are at your home key key so i think that the the key to it is really putting on a show and I think that Horrible Decisions has mastered that. Yeah. How, how important is it to create a, a community? 
Because you have the, the uh, horse, the whore hive, I believe. The whore hive. The whore hive. Um, the whore hive is actually what made, which is why it's still kicking and yeah. running. We've had a lot of ups and downs. And I think that going on the road and meeting our fans and seeing actually how we have changed lives. I know some people may be like, oh my God, all you are is a whore. But the what this what impact this show has actually had on people's lives. <laughs> makes, <laughs> makes, it's big though, yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes all of those comments irrelevant, um, yeah. honestly. And so what we're what we're building uh, again, I think, supersedes both of us. Uh, supersedes our relationship. Supersedes any any hang up we may have as a duo or in our personal lives. And I think that this brand is really, really strong. Is necessary and needed. And I think that it it, it was also a reason for me leaving my other show. I didn't feel that same community being built. I didn't yeah. feel like I was doing something that was actually changing lives. I was actually feeling like, bitch, I'm backstage. What the fuck I said about this nigga? Are they going to kick me out? So like, I actually was having opinions of a lot of people that I share spaces with. And it was just like, mm, so, yeah. this is, this is, uh, how is this feeding into me? And, and it really wasn't. Now that you've uh, been in a leadership role for four or five years, you went through the breakup. Four, Do you four, have five? four or five? How, how long you been, been the podcast? We are, going, we are going into year eight. Oh my! I am, going, I am in five years as an entrepreneur, where I left okay. my job as an accountant. Yeah, baby. My bad, I'm you know, I love you. Entrepreneur. My bad. Eight my years, bad. My apologies. Okay. My career. Eight years in. Yeah. Um, leadership position great hustle that's what i told you at this party i'm like i love seeing you thrive on your own because i know how much work you put in i won't say anything about the other parties but you know but do you that's understand do you understand some of the stuff that you went through with joe more now after going through that with her or what lessons oh. were you able to take from that experience now that you're like front and center in the leadership and uh yeah you know what's crazy you know, I'm just going to share this because I was petty. And it's the one thing that I actually felt the way that, that Joe did. And I was like, ooh, not me being Joe at the end. <laughs> so say, you know, you turned into Joe. I didn't want to say that. Yeah. Uh, so, so, and, and we shared this. So when we left um, the JBN, um, we were working with Savon and Alex, of course. Um, we had Parks as our engineer. We had the whole team within the JBN umbrella, yeah. really, really making the show what it was. And, you know, we left Joe and we thought we could keep the team. And and Joe let it be known, hey, yeah, nah, y'all don't get to keep my resources and pretty much let them know you could stay here and continue working for the JBN or go over there and work for them. But, you know, I took it away and I was like, damn, Nigga, yeah. we've been working with this team for a year and now we got to start from scratch. Okay. And, you know, it was all love. Savon and Alex, you know, chose to stay with the JBN, um, but definitely still shared whatever resources they still had because, you know, yeah. they're podcasters with the Need to Know Pod. And I had to rebuild a team from scratch. Not only do that, I had to make sure it still looked like the same quality. I was getting with Joe. It, it was yeah. a very expensive team. Once we signed with Gumball, we were doing two episodes a week. It was very costly. And here is where I felt bitter that Joe did that. Oh, baby, I did the same. Pick who you want to work with, but you're not working with both. There's, yep, you can't be. Is, we're just about it. You can't be in between when it's wartime. That is my team. And and and, 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 and these are my processes. So guess what? If I find out you're working with the person who I'm no longer working with, I, I, But I will know. I will never keep money from somebody. But I will not allow you to work for both of us. Which is why I will say, um, I WTF Media as the first option for her to record in when I said, hey, out of respect, we're dealing with, you know, our separation. It's not going too well. I don't want you recording out of my studio. You don't get to use my resources, my processes. And she also, with the audacity of wanting me to buy her out, asked for a discounted rate. So no I way. sat on it and I said, you know what? As 
I would just love for this to, for us to move separately. Literally the next day she went and, you know, did her ether record at WTF media about me. Um, and so that's where, again, learning from Joe, like at the end of it all, I built this team. I created what this process With looks studio. like. The, the yeah. studio, the, the, the quality, you don't, you don't get to just leave me and then take what I just built up. Cause it wasn't a we. It wasn't a we. Oh, you sound like a man after he get a divorce. Should have got that that business I cleaned up, huh? You wasn't with me shooting in the gym. Mm. We were there, but it yeah. wasn't a we. And so, to me, I, I will say where I felt bitter in Joe's decision to not allow us to use his team. I one hundred percent understand. Get it at the end of my now dissolution, which well, is still which is still in the works. It's also what I said earlier as far as. You got you're gonna choose the person that's most valuable to you. So when Parks and them um had to make a decision, yeah, it, I, I, it made sense. It makes sense now. Of course, yeah. of course, sometimes you get emotional and be like, damn, but that he's so mean, he's so he I can't believe he did that. And of yeah. course, you want to lean into that part of it, but now, of course, being on the other end of it, I fully understand. And and as as a as a contractor, as someone who's a part of a team, in a split between you know your two CEOs, two partners, yeah, you might have to pick what side you want to be on. Yeah. We see everybody picking sides right now in the Drake beat. What Shots side to the you want to be on? You know. Yep. So, do do you think that there's too many podcasts out there? No, I don't. I I don't believe everyone needs a microphone. I don't believe everyone has something to say. I, I don't believe that any and everybody can start a podcast and one day monetize it. I'm not going to talk or say any names, but I think there's a lot of people, you know, trying to tell people how to make a million dollar podcast and never had a million dollar podcast. Say so, the name, bro. I, I know I'm not going to do that. So I think like to me, <laughs> you know, being out here, you know, spreading the narrative that everyone can have a podcast or make money or monetize on it. That's the false narrative. Too. Yeah. But I do, you know, I, I don't think that there's too many podcasts. I think that a lot of people are looking for their niches. And that would be my advice. Find a niche. Talk about fucking anime. Again, we're in kinks and fetishes. Um, I have another podcast, Can't Afford Therapy, Webby nominated right now. And it's specifically about therapy. Periods yeah. is, is specifically about feminine health and the journeys of women. I think that there may be too many podcasts thinking that we want to hear them and their friends talk That's about nice music yeah. and current current events. Yeah. I, I don't think we need many more of those, but I think if you can hone into a niche with something really to say, that's what we need more of. Yeah. My final question for you, being as transparent as you have been on horrible, um, do you think it's affected your dating life or do you think it's okay. attracted more of the type of people that you wanted to be in your life? I ain't gonna hold you. I had way more niggas when I was fat and broke. Way more niggas. Like, I, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I think that, um, yeah, I think a lot of people are scared, you know, that my in interactions with them may be put yeah. on blast, even though I keep people anonymous. Um, I think that- Yeah, you be um, super low key. Even a horrible, you be super low key. Yeah, I'm very low. Yeah, I'm very low, and I don't, I don't talk to nan nigga with a mic. Y'all ain't gonna know nothing about my body. So, to to me, um, it, it's been hard. I think though, as a woman climbing the financial ladder, I mean, I still also do want to date a a, a a high value black man. I want a man, you know, that makes a, a good amount of money. And I'm a woman inching towards seven figures. So, you know, I think that that makes it more difficult than my show, um, my lifestyle and how, how many days I'm gone. And I'll be honest with you. I don't know how many men y'all have watching this. Men don't want to hear women speak. So they hate that I'm a loud, boisterous, opinionated woman. I think men still want women. But you just said we like conversation, right? It's and, a bunch of yeah, like, yeah, conversation in private. But I like, mm. I've even been in, in, in rooms where men have invited me and they literally been like, yo, 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 I bought you here to stand here and look pretty wrong, bitch. I'm going to sit here and talk to the room. And so I think that 
the way that men even want someone next to their sides isn't someone that's going to dim their shine or have more attention than them. And unfortunately, that's just my personality. So it's going to take a, a strong man, I think, regardless to to be with me. I mean, that's I just had one. I was in a three year relationship, so I know it's possible. I just, strong, you know, got to find strong someone man, else. Strong man shit is toxic. That's toxic. Saudi, talk to us, y'all. You toxic language. Here we go. What is toxic language? Why, why is it toxic language? Go ahead. You, t- you, you put it out there. It's going to take a strong man to deal with me. What does that mean? I'm not wrestling. Let me use a bigger word. It's going to take an emotionally intelligent man who is very secure with themselves to be able to date a woman like me. And yeah. so I, I want to remove strong then. Emotionally intelligent is one. And yeah, someone but, who, but, who who is secure with themselves. It's too much. It, it's too. It, it, it's um. It's giving. Um. It's giving very aggressive energy. It's I'm giving, not aggressive at all. That's the that's thing. What, but that's what it's giving. That's what it's well, giving. Well, well, because I'm a woman talking about what I want. There, there we go. That's aggressive in itself. Let me just be a woman that takes whatever a man gives me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's what y'all want. You better take this bare minimum, bitch. <laughs> well, well, let me ask. For, for the right person, are you willing to adjust things to make a happy medium? Oh, my God. Yes. No. My, my ex made less money than me. I was tired and I still cooked home 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 meals. Oh, there crazy. was there was there was trips that I wanted him on and I I bought the ticket during our relationship. Like there's, there's so you gonna get on me about asking them to fly themselves no, out no, and you no. did it. All I'm dating, that was your man though. That was my man. Got you. I'm gonna fly myself to no nigga that just wants some coochie. Get out of here. Coochie. <laughs> I mean <laughs> oh, oh man. Uh, my coochie Wally. <laughs> or is it one mic? What's going on? Regardless. <laughs> <laughs> Is it Coochie uh, Wally or one mic? Okay. Um, oh my God. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'll find one. I, I have no doubt in my mind that someone will come in and we'll both make each other happy. I think I have a lot of, uh, very good qualities as a partner, and I think I was able to see how much I'm able to show up in my last relationship. So I'm excited to move those into my next relationship. Because in my 20s, when I was dating all the married men, I didn't know I could show up that way. But now I do. I, I know I can. And I I love to see it. Mandy B. Yeah, I'm proud of you. Friend of the program. Congratulations on everything that you got going on. How Thank can they you. Watch, how can they watch your show, social media, all of that? Absolutely. So you can follow me everywhere at Full Court Pumps. You can tune in every Monday to Horrible Decisions. Type in horror, we pop up everywhere. You can also tune in every Wednesday to the Periodist podcast. And I currently have a Kickstarter campaign happening, trying to raise $90,000 in order to create my pilot to period this the animated series, which which showcases and and leads women, from, well, goes from girlhood to womanhood in a comedic adult series. Um, so go on over to kickstarter.com, type in period this and help me raise those those funds because we have 29 more days left in the campaign. Do we get an EP credit in perpetuity? I'm going to hit you with the Joe oh, language oh, now. Oh, no, absolutely. Um, as long as you do, there's tiers. So if you want a uh, producer credit, we, we even have tiers where you can become a background character. Um, of course, you got it, Ian. Uh, check out them tiers. They go up to, uh, I think, 10 grand is the highest. Um, that's light work for you. You know what I mean? Shout out Red Panda. You doing um, too much. Then, Shout out to Red Panda. Mike clipped it up. Yep. Hello. Um, and then also if you're in New York City and have a podcast, I have full court studios. Yeah, studios um, beautiful. Over, over in Bushwick. So come and check me out if you're in Brooklyn. There you have it. There you have it. You. Indeed. Will you be at Invest Fest this year? Uh that's in Atlanta. I think the same date we have a London. It's in it's in May or June. August. It's in August. Oh, August. I ain't got no plans yet. Then I'm gonna go. I know y'all just started dropping all the flyers. Yeah. I'll, I'll be there. Hey. Yeah. Mandy y'all, B. Actually, be- yeah, y'all, y'all catch me at Invest Fest. I'm gonna be on stage uh for one of the panels. Um, so y'all make sure y'all check me. That's August in Atlanta, Georgia. Catch me, Mandy B at Invest Fest. Oh, she <laughs> the promo and everything. Okay, you smart. 
Look, media trainer, you good, yo. Yeah. Promote yourself and promote the other brands. You good. Oh, you You're good. Oh, Mandy B, always a pleasure. Thank you so, yeah. so much. Appreciate you. I see y'all. Love. Oh, oh, Mandy man. B. Mandy hilarious, yo. Always a pleasure when we talk to men. Oh, man. Are we crazy for not wanting to invest in... To 2100, give me 2100. It's crazy. Nah, it was too aggressive. That's Look, crazy. I feel like it's just, it, it, it cheapens the situation, right? Like, yeah. like I said, if I'm going to do something for you, I'm just going to do it. Yeah. Or tastefully, maybe tastefully sprinkle. Yeah. Sprinkle, sprinkle. But just aggressively ask. She's in the Bronx. <laughs> you know the Bronx girls. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to the Bronx, man. Yeah, shout out to the Bronx, man. Um, okay. Well, um, yeah, we got a pretty full episode here. Yeah. I know. Everybody put in comments what y'all think. Shout, shout out to Mandy, though. Hustler, though. I will say she's found ways to navigate the industry, big personality. Um, but even in, in the field that she's in, it's a tough space to be in for everyone who may pr provide some criticism. What if the girls from Call of Daddy get paid for their podcast? Sixty million, something like that. Crazy. That's then, a fact. Then the, the Alexandria dumped her partner and kept all the money for herself. That's it's just fact. her and Rogan over at Spotify. So, like, the big lesson is just carve out short your niche, but also picking good partners. Though you got to pick a good partner to work with, and also like appreciate the partnership that you have that is working. I think that's a big thing um, as well. So. Facts on facts on facts. Yeah. All right. Can we talk about this this Rick Ross situation just briefly before we leave? Yeah, here? real quick. Um. Yeah. yeah. One of these situations, we talked about it on Market Mondays a little bit, but um. Okay, Drake versus Lebron. I want to talk about this a little different than what we did in Market Mondays because this plays into the conversation that we had earlier. Um. They were once extremely close. Close, yep. That's right. How do you know what not to reveal to somebody because it could potentially be used against you in the future? Oh, my, my thing is never reveal anything that you don't want the world to know. To anybody. The, the ones who are closest to you will eventually, if and you hope that it doesn't happen, but if they get upset enough, they may turn on you and tell the information to try to hurt you. Like even um, like we've had conversations before and I'm like, hey, certain things amongst certain people that got to stay in house. Like if I'm with my friend and he bring his friend just because me and you dogs don't tell his business to me. That's and I'm not going to tell my same. I'm gonna let, I know some of y'all get mad. Y'all want to come to the spot where you are in Mexico. Impossible. You're not coming to Houston. I ain't meeting you at the Rocket Center. No, I don't want you to put no tracker on my car. Um, <laughs> you have to be mindful of what you tell people. So, like, my dad and grandma used to always tell me, like, off the record, everything's always on the record. That's what friends, family, media, business partners. So, like, if I say it, I want it to get out. But if not, I think you got to keep it in. I hate that that's happening. I know people say it's a sport. And people forget, like, Ross went through that war with 50 and made it out alive. Yeah. This is easier work for him to do, and I do think he's going a, a little bit far. But um, you can't; you can, should only reveal the things that you want to be let know. Nah, that's one of my life lessons: is that um, the only person that could really hold the secret is a dead man. And um, <laughs> that's a good quote, right? Like that's so, like, um, if I like you said, if if there's something that I don't want anybody to know, I won't yep. tell. I won't tell anybody. Yep. Right. That's just common because it's like every every friend has a friend. And they'll pull it to only p people I tell everything is my mom and dad outside of that. And, and yeah, they're going to tell their wives. They're going to tell yep. that they go. They it's, then it becomes a game of telephone. So, yeah, um, if you don't want something to get out, don't tell anybody. Yeah. And it, just be mindful of whatever you tell anybody. 
only tell them something that you would be comfortable. Worst case scenario, you got out. It doesn't it doesn't really matter? I mean, e even in the last beef he got into with Kanye and Push, he told information about his kid to Kanye, and then Push dropped the song. Oh, is that happen? Yeah. Kanye. Oh, Drake told. I thought Drake and Kanye had beef though. He was out there writing "Father, wash my hands" or whatever. Oh yeah, he, he was, was putting pen to pad for that boy and shout to Kanye. But it's that, and then here come, hey, Kiki, do you love me? Whether well, it's true, you, you once yeah. family gets involved, everything is off limits, man. You can't cry, you cannot cry now. So, but um, shout to Ross, hell of a diss. But I, I'm looking forward to hearing uh, Aubrey's response, yo. I think Drake, um, Drake, I wouldn't respond to Rick Ross until Kendrick Lamar responds and then maybe get a two for one. At the same time? Yeah, yeah. Like, like a takeover where you got one verse dedicated to Ross. But honestly, I don't think he really got to respond to Ross. No disrespect. But I think Kendrick Lamar is the one. And so we just wait for this. We wait for Kendrick's response. Yeah. And um, we escalate at that point in time. Do, do you think Drake makes it out of this unscathed? And I got a little theory too. Like, um, just shout out to Reason because you know I fuck with Reason. Um, this is bigger than just them, though. I think we're going like this is label. This is too much of a coordinated PR attack. Like when I saw all this happen over the weekend, this looked like the rollout for Invest Fest last year. <laughs> this don't happen. Like for those of you who don't know, it's buildings fighting buildings. They Drake think has Lucian, but it's twenty versus one right now. Yeah. Nav came out. On Metro Boomin set, J. Cole came out on Metro Boomin set. J. Cole, J. Cole came out in Coachella? That's what they saying. J. Cole came out on Metro yeah. Boomin set? I saw it a couple of times. Uh, uh, came out. Uh, let's confirm it. Yeah, let's <laughs> confirm it. Shout out to Dreamville. I don't want no smoke. Dreamville, y'all been turning up on everybody who say something in media. Shout out to y'all. I, I, nah, 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 I don't think J. Cole would do that. I don't think J. Cole would do that. He took the seven minute drill off after the first week sales. Well, he apologized too. So I'm not surprised that he took that off. But um, made that call. <laughs> Talk to you for four hours. And I'm hearing Kendrick has something for Cole too and talked him off the ledge and you know. So but but this is interesting seeing the inter the interscope versus universal dynamic, Lucian and top. And for those of you like your Kendrick, he a good kid. He has two T's. That's a real person. Big blood and top. Top is a smarter Shug Knight. He ain't nothing to play with. <laughs> Y'all be like, this is good. People like, yo, hey, won't no, won't no bloodshed come from this. Y'all don't know who is attached to them people, yo. Like, right. this is serious. That's a fact. Yeah, this is serious. And they haven't liked each other for a while. Got to be careful. But I think Drake makes it out of this victorious. But it's a good lesson, too. You can't take everybody girl and do things personally to like upset every friendship. Like you can't go to war with everybody. Can't fuck around. You really can't fuck around. Mm -mm. All right. All so, right. But shout oh. to the boy, shout out to OVO, Chubbs, TV, Gucci. Shout out to Drizzy. Um, yeah. like I said the whole Toronto, all the, all, yeah. the, all the Canadian crew out there. All right, guys. Black you know what I mean? <laughs> Blackout hour has concluded, ladies and gentlemen. It's been real. Yeah. We will see you guys next week. Love y'all. Peace. Love.